Hey there, greetings everyone. Daniel Lowry with Anti-Siphon Training, and I'm back with another installment in our Networking Fundamental Series. Today I'm going to be talking about ARP, the Address Resolution Protocol, not AARP. That's, if you're thinking that, you're in, you're in the wrong video, right? <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta go somewhere else. No, this is ARP, Address Resolution Protocol. And this is a very cool protocol, a very useful protocol, because without it, we don't send data on our local area networks, right? That's, so we like it, it's useful. Uh, I say we start off with what ARP is, kind of what it does. It resolves IP addresses to MAC addresses. Right? So two, two of the big heavy hitters. And it does that so it knows where to send your data to. So if you think of your IP as kind of the, the entity, the host, the person, as it were, their label, their name of who you want to send to, the MAC address is going to kind of be like where they are on the network. And network switches are heavily involved a, a lot with how we send data, though, although it's not absolutely necessary, but it does tell you something about ARP. And that's where working at layer two on the OSI model. If you're thinking of the TCP IP model, then that's the link layer, right? It's fun. You got to keep those models square away in your head. So layer two, the data link layer on OSI or the link layer in the TCP IP model, right? And that's, that's really good. That's, a, that's good information to know because it's, remember all about that MAC address stuff that's going on there. And what ends up happening is, is your computer will keep a cache. It'll keep a list, a little table, a little database of all the devices that it has recently connected to and resolved an IP to their MAC address so that you can easily and quickly send data across the network without having to do a bunch of querying to find out where they are, right? And we can show you that, right? So I'm in the Kali Linux machine, but this will work if you're in Windows or if you're working in like Mac OS, this should work there as well. So I'm gonna run ARP-A. I click enter, and of course, I get these results. I've got an IP address here of 10.10.10.254, and there is the MAC address that is associated with that IP address. And I can see that I learned that through Ethernet 1. That's the adapter that picked up on that and where, where that got out, what network it's connected to, basically. And that's cool, this is the ARP cache. And this is all updated dynamically, so I don't have to actually do anything. ARP is just running under the hood for us, making our lives really easy. It's one of those automagic type of protocols that we enjoy so much. So there you go. Really simple, really straightforward. But I guess what we need to think about now is, like, why do we need this? And I kind of hinted of, about that just a minute ago when I was talking about the, the label, the name of the, of the host you're trying to reach, and as well as that MAC address. So let me see if I can, what if we think of it this way? We think of sending a letter. If I wanted to send a letter from myself to Bob Collins, right? And if I take my letter, I put it in an envelope, I seal it, I put a stamp on it, and I write Bob Collins on the outside of the envelope, and I stick it in my mailbox, the mail carrier is going to show up and go, this is interesting. Bob Collins, you say, where does Bob Collins live? You forgot some stuff and they're absolutely right. And that's kind of like me just putting Bob Collins on there would be like putting just an IP address. It doesn't know how to get there on your local network. If it's not meant to be routed out to another network, then that really doesn't do enough work to help me get this data where it needs to go. I need to give it the street address. I need to give it the city, the state, the zip, all the fun stuff that actually informs the mail carriers of where this goes. I know who it is. Now I need to know where the, that is. And that's what ARP kind of does for us. ARP reaches out to the network and says, hey, I have an IP address. I'm looking for the associated destination, the MAC address that goes along with this. Could anybody help me out? And it does that by broadcasting out to the entire network. It uses a broadcast address. Uh, so if you're looking at it in, in the MAC address format with those hexadecimal values separated by either dashes or colons, it's going to be, let me see if I can remember, FF, 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 and then it goes to FF, followed by FF, and then one more FF. <laughs> so it's it's just basically all Fs. I, I want to make a joke there, but I probably shouldn't. <laughs> we'll keep it family friendly, right? So it will be just a, a, a string of Fs 
that looks like it's in MAC address format. And that goes out to the entire network. And then anybody that sees that and their ARP protocol goes, oh, we're, we're getting a request here. Is this for us? If it isn't, just disregards. If it is, then they respond. And then therefore your computer updates its ARP cache. And now you can easily send data between the two things because now you know where it goes. You know what would be fun? Let's, let's take a look at that, shall we? Let's jump in here. This ought to be a good time. Let me go to a different desktop and let's open Wireshark. Wireshark is just a cool tool for looking at network traffic. Let me choose the correct adapter, which is Ethernet 1. And I can see nothing's really going on. There's not a lot of activity on this network, but let's create some activity. Let me ping a device on this network. 10.10.10.130. 10, 10 Hit enter, some data is being sent, but ARP was also queried, right? It was also employed. And here I'll go ahead and stop this capture. And we can see right here, there is an ARP request. And you'll notice that the source, right? Here's the source that this is coming from this VMware underscore, and then what looks like to be the back half of a MAC address, which is exactly what it is if you were paying attention. And that's that organizationally unique identifier. It's showing up as being from VMware. So Wireshark is just kind of filling that in for us. And that's cool. But you'll notice that, what did it start with? A broadcast. The destination was everywhere. And uh, I, um, yeah, I'm not blocking you there. You can see FF, 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 FF. There it was. Very, very cool. All right. So let's keep uh, taking a look at this thing here. And then here is the actual request. So we see that the protocol was ARP. And it says, who has 10.10.10.129, tell 130, 10.10.10.130, 10, 10, 10, 130, that is. And then we see the same thing down here. Who has 10.10.10.130, 10, 10, 10, tell 10.10.10.129. 10, 10, 10, and then it responds with the IP and the MAC address. And this right here should be the MAC address of this device of 10.10.10.130. 10, 10, 10, and this should be the IP and MAC address of my device. And we can verify that. If we do an IF config, config for ethernet one, we can see there's my IP address and there is my MAC address. And it ends with 389828. Is that what we got? Oh yeah, right there, 389828. So that is at ARP doing its magic. Now, we did this without trying, right? We basically just said, hey, I want to send some data. I tried to do some function that sent data across my network and that triggered ARP to go into effect. I didn't really have to tell ARP to do its thing. And that's cool. We like that because otherwise that would be a lot of work, administrative overhead, we like to call it, administrative effort uh, on our end. We don't want to do that as much as we possibly can. So this is dynamic ARP. It's happening dynamically. This will change after a certain amount of time that ARP cache will start to empty uh, entries out of it. And then as you start to connect with things again, it will reissue those things and, and so on and so forth. But it's all happening under the hood. We don't have to take care of it. That's awesome. That's dynamic ARP. We can do static ARP. That is a rare thing that you would do. It's great for security. If you want to do like super secure, I never want... A, a, a poisoned entry into my ARP cache. So I always want it to be statically this and no updating to the ARP cache on this entry. Uh, you can do things um, in your switches to protect against MAC address changes and things of that nature. So those are some of the kind of protections and you can protect against, I, I think, uh, yeah, I, I thought it'd be fun to show you this. I had this pre-ready, so I didn't have to go too deep in the weeds on this. But this is a tool that performs what's called an ARP cache poisoning attack. It's called EtherCap. There's also a better cap, but I just pulled up EtherCap and did it this way. Uh, and you notice I've got two targets. I've got 10, 10, 10, 130, and I've got 10, 10, 10, 131. And what I do is if I come over here and I say ARP poisoning, and I say, okay, start the poisoning, you can see that it is poisoning victims and it tells me what's happening there. Now this is about to get really interesting because basically what I'm doing is taking advantage of that dynamic system. I'm telling the 10, 10, 10, 130 device and the 10, 10, 10, 131 device, 
that my MAC address is 10, 10, 10, 130. So basically I'm telling 10, 10, 10, 130 that I'm 131 and I'm telling 131 that I'm 130 and I'm responding. I'm, I'm flooding their MAC table, their MAC, i uh, their MAC, their, their ARP cache with my MAC address. That's what's going on there. Right. And I can show you that as well. Let's go. I've got, I'm logged into this one. So I think this is IF config. Uh, it helps if I do IF config. I am a horrible typist, but there you go. So this is 131, 10, 10, 10, 131, right? And if I do ARP dash A, I can see there's my IP address for my Kali Linux and 389828. Yep, that checks out. But I also see 10.10.10.130, which I am not. That's a different machine. And look, 389828. I have fooled this machine into thinking that I am that device. So I'm going to go over here and uh, stop this now so we can get back. Uh, let me kill that session. And now everything's going to be able to go back to normal. But at that point in time, I would be able to successfully work as an adversary in the middle of those two things. This is what's known as an adversary in the middle or a man in the middle or uh, on path attack. And we see that a lot. And it's really, really dangerous because if one of these machines or both of these machines think that I'm the other, when it sends data, it's going to come directly to me. I can then intercept that information, change it, steal it, do whatever I like. I could even send it on to the actually intended target. And then when they replied, I get that information back again. I can do whatever I want with it, forward it on, and they're none the wiser. So it's a really dangerous attack method. So that's why it's good to know some defenses, or at least that that is a security vulnerability. And I thought that would be interesting to kind of see how ARP could be abused, not only just how it works, but how someone could take advantage of it. Well, there you go. That's ARP. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully you've learned a little bit about ARP and why it's important. You should be able to define it. You should be able to understand why and how it works and what we use it for. That said, thanks for watching. I would Love it if you hit that like and subscribe button. We, we want you to engage with us over at Anti-Siphon Training. We got lots of great resources for you. So definitely go to antisiphontraining.com. Check out our Discord, become a member. Uh, we've got webinars, AMAs, you name it. We got many, many things going on throughout every week for you to help you skill up and gain better knowledge, more advancements in your career. Hopefully would come because of that. We're here for you. So avail yourself of those resources. That said, I thank you again for watching and until next time, have a great day.